So big story out of the NFL today, potentially, now potentially, because this is, hey, there's some team sources and sources close to the Steelers that are reporting. Pittsburgh has interest in Russell Wilson when he is released by the Denver Broncos, which beginning of the league, you know, beginning of uh, March Sometime 13th, after next Wednesday. Yeah. Right. Sometimes after next Wednesday, he can be released sometime after March 13th. And the Steelers are the only team we have seen so far that has said had any kind of interest in Russell Wilson. If this is the case, first of all, if this happens, I'm going to take credit for it because I practically dared the Steelers to go get a quarterback. I quarterback dared them. They've not gone out to get a free agent quarterback to be their quarterback of the present and future in 50 years. You They're double do it dog now. quarterback dared them. I, I, I'm like Kevin Bacon in, in A Few Good Men. L. Danny, I practically dared you into the courtroom. You, I dared you. You're like to the go get Christmas story where the one kid dares the other kid to put his <laughs> tongue on the frozen pole outside of class. <laughs> You don't have the guts to do something like that. Oh, yeah? Oh, you just watch us. Double dog dare you. He skips the kid protocol and went straight for the double dog dare. (laughs) Now, it's not Justin Fields, who if they got, I mean, I like Justin Fields more than I think other people do. I would have Pittsburgh as a Super Bowl favorite if they went out and got him. Because look, look how good they are, and they're still trying to make Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph happen, which is just ridiculously bad. Tough division to have problems in. It's, if... It's such a low risk move that if they go out and do this, this is a good move. And mainly because the guy they're bringing in is not named Pickett or Rudolph. And that that's the main <laughs> thing about this. Not that Russell Wilson is great, not that he can still be great, but hey, you never know until you get a guy out there. And I know Kenny Pickett is bad, and I know Mason Rudolph is a backup. So when you think maybe somebody else we can come in, especially if you know that Russell Wilson's going to come in on a very low deal, you know, maybe a veteran's minimum, even if he comes in and they say, hey, you have to back it out to win the job, or even if he comes in as a second string quarterback, at some point he's going to play. And the fact that Pittsburgh, if I'm Pittsburgh, I go out and I do this right away. If I'm not going to make a move for a quarterback or trade for Justin Fields, and I'm really for some reason bent on Pickett and Mason Rudolph, here's a guy you're going to bring in and it's going to cost you nothing. He will cost you absolutely nothing. So yeah, yeah. go ahead and don't, and if you're Russell Wilson, don't mess around. Don't think that suddenly, hey, we're going to, no, because it's not going to get any better. Because if, if we would know by now if more teams were interested. This is the only team we've heard about so far. So, yeah, if you are Pittsburgh, okay, I like it again because it's not named Pickett or, or, or Rudolph. And if you are Russell Wilson, don't screw around. Go do it. This is a, It's a great team to get to that can win. You saw what they were last year. They won 10 games without a quarterback. And if you believe in yourself and maybe things work, because you never know, right? I didn't think Baker Mayfield would be good in Tampa. But look, look, he was, right? I didn't think Geno Smith would be really good in, yeah, in, in Seattle. Ago. But he was, right? So I'll, I'll leave the possibility open that he could still be a version of what he was with the Broncos, which again is not great, but again, better than Pickett and or Mason Rudolph. So yeah, if you if, th- if this is legitimate and this is mutual, th- this should be done right away. Right As soon as that, uh, that new year ticks off on March 13th, that should happen. I've got it. You get Russell, you rotate him in, like playing the same game with Kenny, and then you have the Wilson Pickett offense. You can even <laughs> name a play Mustang Sally, have games in the midnight hour. There are That's any number of again. musical references you could have. The marketing <laughs> would go through the roof for the Steelers on this one. Well, I mean, Mustang Kenny would be a song. I'm sure that would be the song they would have that. They would rename that. Sure, that would happen that way. But the biggest point that you made is the most obvious one, that the team that signed Russell Wilson to a five-year contract for crying out loud is really on the hook for the bulk of the deal. So yeah, it's not a huge risk. It's someone who can still play football. It's not like he doesn't deserve to be in the league and it's the ultimate low risk. You get a veteran at a rookie price. I want that to happen now just so the depth chart can read Wilson Pickett. I really want that. I really want just so we can read that. And then uh, Mason Rudolph is just left out, or he's with the Christmas game only, Rudolph? Or uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He <laughs> plays around the holidays, because that's the only time he can really do it. We can update the NBA game of the night. Is at halftime? Denver up 62-54 <laughs> over the Celtics. And yeah, it's just Jalen Brown and not many other people. 22 out of the 54 for Brown, who had a lower back strain coming in. It's even worse, I'm sure, now. It seems like after Franchise Tag Day earlier this week, there are three teams who are just waving everyone. 
The Broncos, who continue to wave people, they wave Simmons today, potentially they could be trading Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton. Uh, the Buffalo Bills, who waved, I believe, 14 players yesterday. Uh, and the Seattle Seahawks are waving safeties, other players. These three teams, Steve, are waving everybody. And their coach. I believe they waved their coach also. Yes. <laughs> Be right, wrong now, that. right now we're in Arizona, people are going, can we really wave coaches? Can I have we do that? <laughs> there uh, is a cap hit somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't figured that one out. But you look at these three teams now, and obviously Denver is, is at the forefront of this. What these teams are doing, do any of them have hope for next year? Mm. And, you know, you want to start with Denver. Look, they're a complete teardown, right? They're, they're eating all the money for Russell Wilson. They're going to draft a quarterback. And, and, and the fact that they're talking about trading Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton for whatever draft picks they get, because they're not going to bring much back. Because Cortland Sutton's okay. Jerry Judy's okay. But they're just kind of jags. Neither of them turn into be superstars. Sutton's 28. Judy's 24. Judy may have a little bit more uh, value on the open market because or in the trade market because of his youth but you know they, they don't have a lot and so this is going to be an absolute teardown for Denver and, and this is a team that I wouldn't be surprised if hey oh, it, we get into the early part of the season and suddenly it's oh hey yeah the Broncos are in the running for the number one pick in the draft next year like I would, I would not be surprised if that was the reality for the Broncos coming out because they're completely going to blow it up and start over and they're in that division where you think even if our team's a little better I'm not sure if we can win this division and now yikes I, I know it was uh, what was it before last season or the year before everybody's saying oh Wilson's in this division too look at the quarterback look at the teams we have in this division didn't quite work out that way but guess what Patrick Mahomes is still in the division there's a roadblock I mean people have talked years later about how the Eastern Conference playoffs of the NBA there was a Michael Jordan roadblock for years where other players who probably quote deserved a title or a better shot at one couldn't get one because a Hall of Famer was in their way. Maybe this is a good time to rebuild because the Chiefs are in a groove at this point. Yeah, all that talk of boy, look at the greatest quarterback to never better quarterbacks this division. This yeah, that kind of went away. That 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 kind of <laughs> went away pretty yeah. fast. We don't talk about that. But so if Denver, when, it, when you get to cap space, it's still nothing like. I mean, since Harmon's not here, I'll talk about the Bears have cap space and actual promise for a future and a different division or even the Patriots or Washington. I mean, if you talk about who has legitimate and there always is a team that goes from last to the playoffs always in the NFL there are teams that have legitimate you know we might be able to contend sooner than I thought I don't <laughs> I don't think Denver is one of those teams no 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 but make no mistake there will be no illusions no illusion for that in Denver next year none at all uh, now you look at Seattle they're also made big moves to try to cut you cut They'd start, they're going to start over too. They would trade Geno Smith right now if they could, right? What do we hear from John Schneider at the combine? Geno's our quarterback until he isn't. Oh, that tells you that, hey, <laughs> if you want to hold the Ford quarterback, we're kind of upset that we paid Geno all that money wow. last year, but come get him. Like, they want to start that over. That is a him. ringing endorsement. Just hope that your boss doesn't say that to you at your oh. place of employment. Yeah, you know, Steve you work here until you don't. Steve the update anchor three nights a week. Yeah, he's there until he isn't. Yeah, five, <laughs> but thanks. Okay, yeah. great. Oh, I got, I cut you down to three. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. Do you know, I didn't some, hear do you know something I don't? I, I didn't hear anything. Well, you're doing the show two nights with me. You're doing the show with me tonight. That's tomorrow. right. Yeah, there are other people then. So I, they, they would trade Geno Smith if they could. As much as good young talent they have running the football, and, and look, they, their skill position players are really good, right? Their running backs, their wide receivers are really good. But this is also a team that would start over, get, start over at quarterback. I don't expect a lot of great things from them next year, and, and, and I think they know they kind of have to. If they want to really take that big springboard step, they need to be able to start over. And that's why I said, if you want a quarterback and you, you're not that thrilled about – Justin Fields or Russell Wilson, I guarantee you, you could get Geno Smith really cheap. Guarantee it. So now, you're saying that there are free, gen, free agents out there, aside from like Nathan Peterman or A.J. McCarron, who's going to be in the spring league yet again. We're going to be saying Nathan Peterman's name after Bobby Bonilla Day is over. You know, Peterman's still in the league. <laughs> you know, he's 46 years old. They could sign, The Raiders could sign him to start. They could get. They can get him there. I'm telling you. Right by the way, there. Bobby Benia Day will be usurped one day by Shohei Otani Day. 